What's happening guys? This is James Blom from MMOheads.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements of the week ending September 30th, 2013. And our first bit of news this week comes from Area Games with Aura Kingdom. As of this past week, an official website launched for the game providing prospective players with information about the game's core features. One of which is the anime art style that you can see from the trailer playing in the background, along with the crazy mounts and fast-paced combat. As of now, no dates have been released as to when the beta starts, but the website also mentions that information about the game will be updated and added regularly, and that the Aura Kingdom Facebook fans will be the first one to know when the game enters beta. Last week, Webzen launched the second raid for the Extreme Dungeon in Continent of the Ninth Seal. Back in April, players faced off with three raid bosses, but according to the second raid, the first one was a piece of cake. Players now have to face Bar the L, God of Fire himself, and return him back to his fiery prison. As before, the Extreme Dungeon can only be accessed by characters that are level 62 and above, and a full party of four players is strongly recommended. If players manage to take down the God of Fire and obtain the Sealed Book of Flames, it grants the most powerful armor in C9. The martial arts MMORPG from Games Campus, Nine Dragons, is celebrating two years strong this upcoming month, and when it comes to awarding players, yeah, they don't mess around. The celebration begins with brand new clothes and armor, like the new Sung Wukong armor set. The new assemble and disassemble system has been added to craft higher grade weapons and armor, but more so, they're giving away more than 10 grand in physical prizes and virtual in-game items to their players. We're talking keyboards, mice, iPad minis, and more. The coolest part is that they've partnered with MMO Huts to help give it away. You don't believe me? Keep an eye out of the giveaway section at MMOHuts.com closer to mid-October for all the sweet details. Next up, Perfect World International launched its Crimson Imperium update this past week, focused around the Tomb of the Desert Dragon King. A variety of new features were implemented during the update, including the new Perfect Match system that acts as an in-game social network, keeping you connected with friends and combat partners. The Nation's Wars territories have now been resized to 128 territories, and a new legendary Phoenix event has been added. There are plenty of large and small add-ons in this update, so check the link to the article at MMOHuts.com in the description below for more details. Next up, game developer ESTsoft announced their acquisition of all publishing and servicing privileges for Cabal Online in Brazil. Players in Brazil will be able to transfer their characters and game data over to the new ESTsoft-run servers seamlessly. And now that the publishing and service management sectors exist so close to the development of the game, Brazilian players will receive more responsive and more informed support, faster and more expansive game content updates, and an overall increase of quality of service. Cabal Online is also in the midst of its campaign on Steam Greenlight, and currently holds the position in the top 10 on the community support-driven platform. If Cabal Online is greenlit, Brazil service players will be able to experience Cabal Online with full Steam support. As of September 26th, Wargaming has seen the Royal Air Force Warbirds taking the skies in the world of warplanes. The latest version, 0.5.3, introduces several branches of the British fighters and heavy fighters, including such renowned models as the Spitfire, Blenheim F, Skua, and the Javelin. The update also adds in new advanced mouse control options, 11 new premium planes, and two brand new maps to further add to the game's variety of features. Fresh into RuneScape 3, Jagex introduced a new way for players to trade in-game, including memberships themselves. Jagex introduced bonds that can supposedly liberate player-to-player -player trading, including the ability to now access all premium membership content through the in-game wealth earned by dedicated players. So players can basically purchase bonds with real money or in-game wealth, then gift, swap, or sell that bond to use it for anything once more, including premium content. This method is very similar to the Chrono that SOE introduced in some of their games, and hopefully it works out nicely for everyone. Catwoman sneaks in as the latest champion to Infinite Crisis, and just like her Gaslight lookalike, she sports high damage. This one works a little bit more with mobility and utility to take down her enemies. Her passive grants her faster cooldowns to active abilities as she collects coins, and as you expect with her badass whip, she's got a nice trip skill called Cat's Paw that deals damage and reduces enemies' movement speed. And Catwoman wouldn't be Catwoman without the ability to catch or flee. Plus, her ultimate adds a bleed to all her basic attacks and skills, indicating that she is one bad kitty. On a similar note, different universe, Marvel Heroes launched its largest update to date with Game Update 1.3 this week. The latest update includes a boatload of new content, including the new hero Luke Cage, 
Prestige Mode, which is a way of continuing the challenge after reaching level 60. The Hero Synergy System, where each hero unlocks account-wide synergy bonuses at levels 25 and 50 that can be equipped on any hero. It's basically account-wide attributes for heroes. Not to mention Odin himself is adding new legendary quests to challenge players. Along with these major updates, a new enchanted costume, Lady Deadpool, is available for purchase. Microvolts launched the Hefty Surge update recently, bringing with it several important changes and tons of highly anticipated new features. One of the most notable upgrades is the new user interface that is much more intuitive to navigate and better displays game information. Players can now customize the controls in the game to much greater detail, and now players can socialize to the max in the in-game community area known as the Plaza. Coming from the developers, the most common request from their player base was to rework the game balance to increase the skill level required for competitive play, and the Surge update makes a huge leap in terms of game balancing across the board. There are plenty more features added to the Surge update to revamp the game, so check the link in the description below for more details. Next up, we've got a closed beta announcement for a new hack and slash MMORPG called Hero of the Obelisk. Formerly known as Dungeon Hero, this game features three classes, each with two job branches that further differentiate the classes. Sort of looks like Dragon's Nest, but the nice thing is, is what I can see so far, is the game doesn't have gender lock classes, which is a nice thing to see in a dungeon crawler. The game is published by GBE Games and is set to hit closed beta on October 10th, so head over to the game profile at MMOHuts.com to register. And finally, our last bit of news for this week has to do with Path of Exile. Big news is coming as the game gets closer to its launch date, which is actually a matter of days from now. Dizzy BW got a chance to meet up with Grinding Gear Games to talk about some of the new things coming to the game before launch and post-launch. And unfortunately, the news is so big that we can't spill the beans until Friday, so I'd say keep an eye out for the exclusive article coming later this weekend. Trust me, it's worth it. But anyway guys, that's it for this week's MMO news and announcements. Like always, if you're looking for more information about the news covered this week, or more news in general, check the links in the description below, then head over to MMOHuts.com news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below, or head over to MMOHuts.com forum. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers. <laughs>